Tails Nation, in this video today, we are going to be talking about offset jaws versus regular jaws, coil springs versus long springs. Stay tuned. Let's get down to the bottom of the offset versus the long spring, or excuse me, the offset versus the regular jaw or the coil spring versus the long spring. Stay tuned. Folks. We got Bridger one and three quarter offset jaw, and this is a Duke one and three quarter regular jaw. I apologize, I do not have the same exact size trap in the same brand um, in a regular jaw in an offset jaw to show you this, but this will work and it's gonna give us an idea, give you guys an idea of my theory on these traps. So just to start this off, when I was a younger, younger guy, um, I would never buy an offset trap, ever. You know, I was one of those guys that thought, Wow, there's a big, there's a, you know, a gap right here. They can pull out easier. What's, what's the point of this offset trap? So, I was always a regular jaw guy. So, and after I got to thinking, looking at design, design, talking to a few guys, um, you know, it, it, it started clicking. And that's why I'm making this video for the guys and gals that think the way that I thought versus how it's actually working. So, there's Bridger one and three quarter offset. We have. Oh, what do you think? Or maybe about a quarter, three eighths inch gap, something like that. Where your regular jaw, there is no gap. Period. I mean, jaws are touching jaws right there. So forth. So, what we are going to use for this experiment, two screwdriver handles. They are going to be uh, um, the legs of an animal that we catch. You know, whatever it is. The only reason I chose these two screwdrivers, as you can see, it's hard to tell, but the... Uh, the diameter of them identical, exactly the same. So with that being said, I am going to set this one and three quarters. And I've caught myself in these plenty of times. If you wanna watch me catch myself, comment below and I'll make another video. Um, the last beaver movie I made, um, it's titled, I want to say, Spring Beaver, the biggest beaver ever I've caught. Um, in there, I catch myself in a number four on purpose just to show the antis and all that. That, hey, you know, it doesn't hurt. But regardless, screwdriver handle, Bridger uh, one and three quarter offset jaw, caught. Okay. So we're going to set that off to the side. Now we're going to take this Duke. Same exact thing. Screwdriver, trap, we're caught. Okay, so you can see right there, we're darn near identical right with the uh, areas of the, of the uh, uh, screwdriver. So let's go over first the offset jaw. So we have our offset jaw where we have this determined about a 3 8 inch gap something like that in the center of the screwdriver so let's take a peek at these ears do you see how far up these ears are off of the base the shank of this trap okay so now if this animal is in here fighting this I'm gonna back up a little bit if this animal is in here fighting this trap he would have to get a heck of a lot more leverage to push these ears down these levers down to open up to get out now Let's take a peek at the regular jaw, where you can see, and again, this is a different brand trap. I wish it was a square jaw, um, but I don't have a Bridger regular uh, jaw, one and three quarter. But with this being said, you can see how much farther down these ears are on this regular jaw trap. Let me pick them both up. And you can see the difference right there. Regular, offset. Regular, offset. So, it has nothing to do with relief of the animal's foot. It has to do with this lever. I mean, I'm not saying you're going to catch a coon in the front foot and he can't pull out of this easier. He most definitely can if you get a small coon and you just get a toe catch because you're never going to hold him, ever. You're never going to hold a muskrat in this trap, you know, if you'd use it, but you would never be using this this in a uh, water set. This is strictly a land-based set um, that I use these one and three quarter bridges for. Sorry, I got a fly in here. Um, 
And the same with the, the Duke one and three quarters, that's all I was using them for is land based sets. But as you get that coyote in here, pull and pull and pull and, and he gets a little bit of leverage to pop that jaw or get that lever down one bit, boom, he's gone. Where you could see right here, you have a gap. All right, here, I got a tape measure and we're gonna measure the differences on these ears. Again, with these being two different um, style traps, it's not gonna show up as it would if I had two square jaws or two round jaw traps in the same size, but it's at least gonna give you an idea. So, right here's the Duke. Let me get that tape measure in that ear. And you can see we're gonna go off the base of the shank. Back up. We're about, ooh, inch and a quarter or so from the base of the shank up. So we have an inch and a quarter from where this tape measure is touching the ear down to the base of that trap. So now let's go with the Bridger. Bridger one and three quarter. Now we are touching and you can see right here we're about an inch and a half. So we added a quarter inch of these levers going up versus the regular jaw. So, again, I'm not trying to prove anybody wrong. I'm just trying to, you know, educate you folks because, again, I thought the same exact way. Like, oh, I'm never going to buy an offset, never going to buy an offset, always regular jaw, going to get a tighter hold, a better hold on an animal. Not the case. Plus, if you guys are getting coons and toe catches and all that and you don't want coons, go with that guy. You know, better chance of them pulling out, not ruin your set, destroying your set. All right, so you saw my theory on the offset versus regular jaw trap. So now let's move on to coil spring versus a long spring. So what I'm gonna use here is a piece of 3 8 rebar. I have another one down here with the stake. We are gonna use this rebar, um, and that's essentially gonna be our animal foot in these smaller traps. One thing I wanted to point out, this is a Duke one and a half. This is just a regular jaw. Uh, I know the last video I mentioned double jaws, which I did buy, I think, two dozen of them. I have them sitting down there. I don't know. Um, but what I'm going to do with these guys is I want to show you straight out of the box what I do. And again, this is what I do. If you don't you know, like it, it is what it is. Um, all I do is loosen up this nut and screw. Zero pan tension. You know, whatever that pan weight is, that's, that's what my tension is. So we're going to set this. And one thing I wanted to point out, sometimes with these Dukes and you guys that use them, the pan, the dog is too long. So when you go to push down on the pan, it, the trap never sets off. you got to actually throw the trap to get it to bounce and set off. So what I do is I take this pan and I push the pan up to where we bend this here, here shank, and it pushes that dog back. And it saves you from having to grind the dog. And if you grind the dog down, cut the dog down too short, well, now you're back to replacing the dog. It just eliminates the, the chances of that happening. And if you're out in a, in a stream, well, chances are you don't have a battery-powered battery, battery, uh, battery powered Makita with you to grind it off. So that's just the way I do it. So get this guy set. So what I want to do here is we're going to take his 3A3 bar. Boom. Set off in the coil spring. One and a half coil spring. Now again, these are not like traps. Right here I have a Sleepy Creek uh, number 11, but it's a double long spring, okay? And my springs in this guy are weak. So, but regardless, what you guys should know is a long spring trap is much, much, much slower than a coil spring. Much, much. That's why you see, um, you don't see guys using coil spring or long springs for coyotes. You will see them for bobcats but very rarely do you see a long spring used for canines. So now we're going to set that guy off in, in the uh, number 11. So what I want to point out here is ears. Same theory. Same theory with the offset versus the regular jaw. Now look at these long springs. Do you know how much leverage these animals would have to get to push that long spring down enough to pull out. Versus here, sorry, right here, you have, you, 
nowhere near the amount of leverage needed to push down the ears of this coil spring. So why am I using the coil spring? Well, A, they're cheaper. B, there was like a shortage. You couldn't even find long springs, you know, last year for anything. Um, so that's why I bought all these coil springs. And like I said, they are cheaper, so if they get stolen, boo-hoo, it is what it is, it happens. I mean, I don't want it to happen, but it does happen. Um, but I do still have, I think, like eight or 10 of these double long springs, number 11s, and I will set them, I will. But just to prove, I wanted to show you guys, you know, obviously we get a better hold on a long spring, but our coil spring is much faster. Um, and in the last video, I mentioned about four coils. If you wanna make this coil spring really fast, you four coil it, that's what you do. Um, and I know I've mentioned numerous times, I'm not a fan of four coils, just because I don't need it. You know, every year I've trapped, uh, my traps have been fast enough. Sorry. My traps have been fast enough, they've held animals. Uh, the only times they're not fast enough is when they freeze down. And everybody gets freeze downs at some point, unless you're carrying uh, wax turtle. And that's something I don't do, I use rock salt. So, with that being said, folks, that was our video today. Just a short little my opinion on traps and why I use what I use and how I use them. Um, again, run, run back through it. My opinion, long spring, way better hold, much slower trap. Coil spring, real fast trap. Cost effective, coil spring, especially if you're in a high theft area. Offset, regular jaw. Offset, in my opinion, better hold, less chance of a pullout because of these ears. Regular jaw, yes, you're still going to get a hold, get a good hold, but you have a better chance because you need le less leverage to push these ears down once you're in the trap. So, and while those animals are in there fighting, pulling that trap, you know, all they're doing is torquing. They're torquing everything on this trap, trying to get out. So, and at that point, they, they have no fear. They have no mercy at that point. They're trying to go. So, and who knows? what that trap can hold. So again, I hope you enjoyed it. That's my theory. Uh, take care, have a great weekend, and next video, trap prep. I'll try to get some uh, waxing and dyeing going.